All right, so because most modern games are complete and genuine garbage, if you're making a game or you're thinking of making a game, or even if you're just a player, right? But this might be something for you to keep in mind. I want to give you a cheat code to basically making your game loved and addictive from the very beginning. Because a lot of games don't do this, right? A lot of games, like, you join in just because you heard about it. Or just because it's, like, really popular. And, like, you know, you played for a bit and you're like, what the hell is this, you know? Like, you don't understand. And the only reason why you keep playing is because you're promised that the game will eventually get good. But you don't want that. And your new game doesn't have that luxury. Your new game will not have people begging other people to play it. It's, it's not gonna be like that, right? So yeah, listen up, because I'm a professional player, okay? And I know what makes games fun. All right, so number one, limited open world. Not just open world, right? Limited open world. And now you might be asking, oh, what is the difference? Okay, let me show you, right? Let's say we have a part like this. And then let me just copy this part, okay? Just move it over here. And yeah, there we go. Now we have a second part, okay? Let's consider this our open world game. This is the spawn, and then this is another part of the world which you could get into, okay? Now, if I play this game, what a regular open world game would do is just let you walk over there, no repercussion. And that's it, right? You, it just lets you go anywhere you want. Because a lot of people believe that open world is like going to be a big factor for people playing their game, which it might. Like if your open world is really good and it's like really huge and it, you know, looks really amazing, fair enough. But when I say limited open world, I mean a world where you know that it's open world and you know that there's a lot of cool stuff awaiting you. Like you know there's going to be a lot of really interesting places that you have to go to. But you also know that you can't just go to those places straight off the bat. You're not given this ultimate freedom where you're just like shown a bunch of these like, wow, cool place and then another cool place and another cool place. Instead, you discover your current little area, you know, you build some materials or whatever, and then you go to another area. A game like Subnautica does this fabulously well, where you get thrown into an open world, just like that, you're just, you know, thrown into this, like, little life pod, you, you know, a ship exploded, that's all you know. Now you're in this life pod, you're in this big ocean alien planet, and even though the game is open world, you're still limited to the starter area, because going any deeper isn't a thing you could do, because then you'd run out of oxygen and die. So you need to use your starter area to construct something that make, can make you go faster, or something that can give you more breathable air, and then that technically unlocks new parts of the map. They were never like physically locked, but you couldn't get to them, you couldn't live in them, because then you would just die due to a lack of oxygen. And a game like Subnautica knows that it's doing this because literally even its vehicle, so you can like construct a little like submarine in the game, which basically gives you infinite oxygen wherever you are, right? Which you'd think would unlock the entire world, but it doesn't because the submarine basically starts breaking at a certain depth. So you literally have to go and find like blueprints and resources for like upgrading your submarine so that it can go beyond 200 meters of depth. And I don't know about you, but for a lot of players, that's infinitely more fun because it feels deserved. Right, You have this open world which you want to explore, but it's locked. But you want it. And so even in this Roblox example, right, what a lot of games do is they give you this amazing open world. Again, pretend this is like an amazing like experience, right? And they just let you go from point A to point B. Just like that, okay? You know what a good game would do? A good game would say, okay, I don't want you to really go to point A to point B just yet. I don't want there to be like a, like a whole menu where it's like, oh, you, uh, you haven't unlocked this area because you're low level. Because games that do this are insanely stupid, okay? But maybe you could insert a script in the base plate, right? And you could say, okay, whenever something touches the base plate, we just say hits.parents dot humanoid dot health is equal to zero, okay? Just whenever anything touches the base plate, we're just gonna kill them. Like so. And so now obviously we can't get to the other area because then we'll just die. Like it's not locked or anything, but it is limited. Those are different things. And so then what you could do is either make the player, you know, construct some new item that lets him, you know, pass to this area. Or if you're making more of like a puzzle game, then you could make the player like learn some new information which will let him like cross this gap safely, right? And then we could say like, oh yay, if the player has this item or this information, then nothing's gonna happen to him. Yay, look at that, he can now go to this new area and then learn new things here or construct new things here and go to a different area. Now, another really interesting mechanic that I've seen only one game utilized properly, I mean, I've only played one game with this mechanic, is a time loop. This one is a lot less general than the first one, because the thing is, like, limited open world, you could make in basically any game. Like, you could think of a lot of games that could work with limited open world, but a time loop game feels like it'd be too reliant on the fact that it's a time loop game, right? Like, not a lot of games pride themselves on being limited open world, 
But the reason I mentioned Time Loop is because I just got done playing Outer Wilds, right? Which is really awesome. You should go check it out. And in short, it is a game that whenever you die, you're in a time loop. And so you get sent back to the very beginning. And your only progress is just the knowledge that you learn. So you could fly to a planet. You could like, you know, study the, uh, the planet a bunch and you could learn like, okay, this is what happened to this and this is what happened to that. But that's all you can do, right? Like all you do in the game is just learn new information. The moment you die and go back to the beginning, everything resets. Well, physically, right? You retain all of your memories, obviously. Now, the reason I'm bringing up this whole time loop thing is not even because of the fact that like, oh, you know, it's a time loop and that sounds kind of fun. Because again this video is for mechanics that instantly engage players right so the way that a time loop can engage players is by basically making time into almost this other dimension like specifically in outer wilds i love the fact that i can start my loop and effectively go anywhere like i'm not afraid of the fact that like oh i have the ship and i have to you know really manage my resources and have to ensure that you know my ship doesn't break or anything or like oh i can't go too far in this planet because i risk the chance of getting eaten by this fish but like with a time loop that doesn't happen because time becomes its own dimension you almost master time in a way because you learn how it works you learn the fact that like oh if i die i get sent back nothing bad happens all i do is i just like retain new information and so then that becomes fun you want to push for a new thing you want to go and explore that planet you want to go in the in its core because you don't care if you die or not right you just want to learn new things and i think it's that like freedom right it's that like ability to do whatever you want while still having some restrictions is what makes the game very fun because there isn't really a punishment for learning new things besides i guess you know having to return back and having to fly for a little bit again like in this scenario right imagine if i said okay local car is equal to hit dot parent okay because character is the player's character hit dot parent is hopefully going to be the character and so then i can just say game dot players right get player from character i can give the character and then i could just kick that player right and so then what's going to happen is that like yeah, there we go. I know it doesn't show the message, but I cannot move because my client has just been kicked. A lot of games do this, right? Where like you die and that's it. You just lose all of your progress and it sucks and you were just punished for trying to explore somewhere. And again, that's not a bad mechanic. I really like games that actually make certain things risky. I mean, again, Subnautica does this insanely well, right? Like I feel like Subnautica wouldn't be Subnautica if there wasn't a risk of just dying or getting like your items broken but then what a game like outer wilds does is instead of doing the whole like oh yeah we kick you and you are dead now i mean it only does that once but that's kind of a spoiler right instead what it does is it just says like okay let's just put you back right so it just says like character dot humanoid root part dot position workspace dot spawn location dot position right and maybe plus like vector three dot new zero ten zero which all that does is just whenever now i die quote unquote I just get sent back that's it right like for for example maybe like i'm like oh what is this why can't i jump there and i keep jumping and i keep dying oh no but then maybe a thing you could add in your game is that like when you jump and you look back maybe like on here there's like some sort of button that's hidden right and then like if i jump and i press the button right then that like activates some sort of bridge you can make a game that literally like encourages the player to go and like die quote unquote because then they learn new information and then they can use it to basically get to the next area so yeah time mechanics are always pretty engaging and speaking of dimensions i think a new dimension for a first person shooter would be insanely fun i'm not sure if you've heard of this game called split gate it had like a big um rise in popularity for a little bit and then it like died off but i played the game and it's really really fun like i like genuinely really fun now i've never played halo but a lot of people do say that it's like halo so the game isn't really known for its like combat mechanics what the game is known for is the fact that like i said it basically introduces a whole new playing field a whole new dimension of thinking and strategizing by letting you place your own portals which literally makes you think in a fourth dimension. Instead of now it's like, oh yeah, where is this person? And oh, oh, he's hiding behind this wall. Maybe I can shoot him. Now what you have to think is like, oh, he can place portals. So he just went in this, in this wall, but what if he has a portal here? And then where is his other portal? Did he place a portal before coming here? Or maybe you're portaling and you're thinking like, oh, I want to get to the other side of the map. Well, I can portal here and then other portal can go here and I can go inside this portal and then I can jump away and then portal this and portal here. Like genuinely, imagine a Roblox game where you could make exactly that. I don't think you could make a portal where like you could see what's on the other side of the portal. I don't know if Roblox is like that advanced right now, but you could easily make like special portal walls. Like, you know, just a regular first person shooter, but then the player can like press Q or E or whatever. 
and then if they're facing a wall and then they you know shoot a portal at the wall then you know you could fire like a ray cast in the part and i'm not too sure if you could actually know like which face of the part the ray cast touched and then you could just like i said yeah just make a portal here right and so if the player shoots in the portal it comes out of the other portal if anyone enters the portal they come out of the other portal if like some rocket gets hit in the portal it gets sent to another portal just any mechanic that takes like an fps game and just adds a whole new layer of thought into it like for example there's this game which i don't know what it's called but it almost like turns the map into like a fractal where like when you go in the middle of the map it gets bigger and bigger right so you never can really like go in the center and that's very cool because now, like I said, you have a whole other dimension to play around with. And this can work with any other game, fair enough. But the reason I'm just saying uh, FPS games specifically is because they're meant to be very, like, stimulating. They're meant to be, like, very fast-paced and, like, you know, like, action-based. And I just think that right now, a lot of these shooter games are kind of losing that effect. I feel like people are looking for a lot more strategy because now they're kind of tired of the default first-person shooter, right? It's why Fortnite is one of the most played FPS games of all time, because they just keep adding new stuff. Like, the new season, you, there's like a guitar where you can like, go up and then fly around or something, and then there's like a car where you can like, j drive it and then you just like, go across the map or whatever. And it's also why games with like, a lot of shooter abilities, or different characters, different classes, always end up doing a lot better than games with just basic bare bones shooter gameplay right okay the next one is going to be quick it's just a promise of insane huge resources okay this is why like this is like incremental games simulator games tycoon games basically a game where you go in and then you see a bunch of players having like a, a bunch of these like coins or cash or whatever and there's like a bunch of world you can discover or games where you start off like really weak and then you're like oh if you kill the zombie you get one coin and then for one coin you can buy a turret that kills zombies for you and then for 10 coins you could buy another turret that kills other zombies for you and in fact my recent video is about making a game exactly like that and again that's just because it's insanely addictive right you just start by giving the player you know very little resources but you just keep them hooked with this like promise that like eventually they'll grind their way to basically having everything because that is very addictive right like imagine you're like struggling against these like 10 zombies and you have to shoot all of them but you keep playing because you're like oh if i can upgrade my base and i can buy this ultimate minigun turret then I could have a bunch of zombies coming to my base, but then this turret is gonna shoot and kill all of them. It's fun, right? And I'm sure you've had your phase where, like, you played some tycoon or simulator or incremental game for way too long for exactly that reason. You just wanted to grind your way to basically being the best at, like, everything. And last, but definitely not least, which in fact I actually feel like this one is the most important one, is being a real experience. Ah, I know, cue the Roblox jokes, you know, they're calling games experiences now, but you know what I mean. And I'll actually use Subnautica uh, again as a great example of this. When I say experience, I'm talking about a game that starts off by literally like putting you in this world that is insanely hooking, as opposed to a game that makes it clear that it's just a game. Like, you know, games where like you start something and they literally give you like quests like they literally say like okay kill this king and then you have like a big marker a big checkpoint where you say like oh yeah travel this distance and you're this far away and then like a cutscene begins playing you know what i mean obviously these aren't bad things to do right games are meant to be games there's nothing wrong with that they are really fun but again this is just one of those ways to make your game genuinely stand out and it's hard because a lot of these are hard right if every game stood out then none of them would be. So I'm not saying that any of this is easy to do. But depending on the type of your game, if you prioritize making it feel like a genuine, like living and breathing world that almost doesn't revolve around you, like a world that like exists without you really needing to be there. A world that feels like it's just independent, it's on its own, which doesn't care what you do, doesn't care whether you live, doesn't care whether you die. And in the case of Subnautica, it does that insanely well, and that's why it's gathered the success that it has. And it's also why every single fan of Subnautica is insanely dedicated to being a fan of the game. And I feel like the main like common thing between all of these is the fact that it involves giving the players almost a burning question to solve. And obviously, that just makes them interested in the game from the very beginning. And I think that's actually why all of these are even interesting. Like, limited open world is interesting because, again, it gives you a burning question. You're like, oh, I want to see the other parts of the world. So again, that makes you interested. Time loop is also interesting because like, oh, why am I even in a time loop, right? Or if it's explained, well, you're in the time loop to explore and learn, right? Which is literally the whole idea of a burning question. Now, adding portals or whatever to like, you know, first person shooters might not seem like it fits the criteria, but it kind of does though, because it does give you a burning question for you to solve 
which is just like testing your capability to think in like new dimensions, I guess. I mean, th th that's kind of a cope. I don't even know if that like applies to this, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Now, the Tycoon Simulator incremental games, I don't think they have a burning question. I think it's just like, oh, I want to grind my way up to the top. It's just addictive, which fair enough. And by being a real experience, you just make players interested in your world by default, right? So that also checks out. And so yeah, you know, if you're thinking of making a game or you're making a game right now today, which if you aren't, you really should, please do try and utilize one of these in your game because I guarantee you, if you do it right, you will literally have a game that's just blows up like overnight honestly and i know we're in like a roblox studio but it honestly doesn't matter if it's a roblox game or not you could be like making some game for steam or whatever or, like some some game jam game i don't know but like i said utilize one of these and your game will always stand out now whether it's good or not obviously then is based on like how much effort and thinking you've put into the game obviously but look at that point to be fair <laughs> that's on you so yeah if you enjoyed my teaching style check out a free preview of my course in the description and the link comment and as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.